I really don't have much to say about this one. Hey, can we skip this one? Can we, can we do that? Can we? Ever wondered when we will finally have a better way to fix the errors we've made on PowerPoint? Well, don't worry, because SlideProof, the all-in-one PowerPoint add-in, has you covered. SlideProof's check feature is the best proofing engine on the market and easily identifies inconsistencies in content, formatting, and layout with the ability to instantly fix them with a click of a button. And this is only one of four features that SlideProof has to offer. Check out SlideProof.com to know more. Welcome back to another video from SlideCal. My name is YoYo and together we're going to make your slides amusing. Before we even get into this, thank you all for the heartwarming messages wishing me a speedy recovery. I am 100% recovered and ready to get back into the PowerPoint game. This week it's about making a split up cube infographic. The infographic is really, really easy to make and really, really awesome to look at. Credit where it's due though, the idea for a split up cube is not mine. I saw this slide in a PowerPoint template called New Proposal and when I saw it, I had to learn how to make it or at least a variation of it in order to show you guys. And here it is. I recommend using this infographic when you're looking at data components that make up something. For example, if you have an hour methodology slide, this cube would represent the methodology and each segment of the cube represents part of that methodology. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a blank slide like always. And we're just gonna delete all this stuff here. And uh, we are going to first tackle the outer surface shape here. You might think that this is just a chevron. It's not, right? It's, it's completely made up of different shapes. And the reason for that is, although a chevron uh, tool is good and is usable in this circumstance, it's hard for us to edit as we go down the line. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So just for reference sake, I'm just gonna bring this shape over here. This is the shape we're gonna make, okay? This one right here. We're gonna click on insert and we're gonna click on shapes. And we're gonna click on the diamond shape, which is the shape which is right over here. We're gonna make it something that looks like this, right? We're gonna make it really wide, okay? Something like that. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to make sure it doesn't have an outline and we're gonna make this one a dark blue color, all right? Now, click on the shape that you have here, press on Control, Shift, and drag another shape downward so you make an identical copy, something that looks like this. You're going to make this one, all right, a dark, uh, a light gray or whatever color you'd like. The top color represents the outer surface and the bottom color represents the inner surface. Just keep that in mind, all right? So then when you have that done, uh, you wanna make sure that you have a shape covering these little two triangles here. So what I did was I just went to insert shapes and I went to this little uh, rectangle thing here. Just bring it around like this and just make sure it covers both. Send it to back, okay? Don't change the shape or, or color or anything, all right? And then highlight them all, click on format, merge shapes, and then just click on fragment, okay? Now, delete the stuff that you don't want, which is this, 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 and this. And essentially you're just gonna be left with a shape that looks like this, which is exactly the shape that you want, right? Highlight everything, and when you're happy with it, just click on Merge Shapes Union and it essentially just becomes one shape now. And there we go, there's our shape. The reason why we went with this shape, again, and not the chevron, is because this shape is completely editable according to how we want to edit it, uh, in accordance to the inner surface and the outer surface. If we were to go with the chevron tool, we have to adjust the, the chevron against the little inner surface. But with this one, we don't even have to, right? We're just saving time for the future. So I'm gonna make this one a dark blue. And I'm just going to make it a bit smaller so it just fits our uh, little um, infographic overall. Then we're just going to click on insert shapes and we're going to make a another diamond which is something that looks like this. Bring it up here. Just bring it in the middle like this and then just stretch it out like so and like so. Make this gray or any color that you'd like. Click on, oh sorry this gray and click on no outline and then you just want to ship this upwards like that and click on right click on it and click on send to back and there you go okay there's our first shape all right um, already it doesn't look like much but uh, once you sort of stack it like I just did here it's gonna look like a lot so let's just group it like so make this a bit wider actually yeah just like that that looks fine 
With this shape selected, you want to press on control, shift, and then drag it downwards like this, right? And then you want to make this shape smaller than the initial shape. So let's just make it small like this, all right? And let's just stack it like that. Let's make it a bit taller. Yeah, this looks fine, all right? Then make a third shape, all right? And make this one even smaller, right? Something that looks like that, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to take these two shapes here, flip them, and make it your other two shapes like I've done here. So I'm going to take this shape, right? I'm going to control shift and then drag and drop it here. I'm going to go to um, arrange, rotate and then flip vertical just like that. And I'm going to put it here. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other shape, which is just over there, the top shape. I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to go to arrange, rotate, flip vertical. And I'm going to right click on the bottom shape here and then click on send to back. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we have a split up cube and it looks pretty nice, pretty nice. The important design principle of this is just make sure this cube, uh, sorry, this part of the cube and this part of the cube aren't touching because if they do and they overlap, it doesn't, it looks a bit weird, right? Um, and just make sure that these three stack, right? That shows that it's coming from the top and these two stack over one another. And this shows that it's, you know, it's the foundation of the bottom, right? So when you're happy with that, just highlight it all. Uh, press on Control G. That will be our infographic for for the uh, for the for the remainder of this uh, of this uh, tutorial. You can make it smaller. You can make it wider if you'd like. I don't recommend that though. You can make it any way you'd like. So I'm just gonna bring this over here and just make this a bit bigger. Um, that looks like this, right? All right. So we have our infographic now. It's very easy to make. Stage two of the process is to actually uh, add the text and the labels and the and the, and the points and etc. So we're gonna do this one by one. Um, and what I mean by that is we're just first going to tackle the line and then the circle and then the, and then the text itself. So the first thing is we're going to go to insert shapes and we're going to click on line and we're just going to make a long line. Hold shift when you make your line so you ensure that it's straight guys. Um, click on shape outline, uh, make it a light gray like I'm about to do now and then just click on weight, put that to three. And then click on dashes and just make sure that the dashes and click on any design you'd like. Personally, I really like this one. I like it a lot for some reason, but uh, you can you can pick on anything that you really like. So I'm going with, the, with this design here, right? And then I'm going to go to insert shapes and I'm going to make a circle. Something looks like this. Um, and I'm going to make sure that that shape and that circle are completely in horizontal alignment, just like that. Um, Let's just click on the color that you'd want. No outline at all. Pick the number that you'd like and change the font. I'm changing mine to Panton Black Caps. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to make a text box right next to the number, right? And uh, just click on title here. And I guess I can just use the text from this one just to save time. So any text that you'd like here. Uh, change the font size let's change the font of the title and change the color of that as well and let's justify the text here and let's make this gray dark gray so it fits pretty nicely okay so now you want to make sure that everything's perfectly aligned you want to click on all three click on arrange click on align and then you want to click on um align middle just to make sure that everything's in horizontal alignment right perfect okay now we want to highlight everything from this side so you want to highlight the line you want to highlight the circle and you want to highlight the text box press on Control g all right and make five copies don't worry about the spacing for now all right just make five copies like so two three Five. Okay, so the fifth one here, I think can go down just a bit. Just make sure that you space them so each line is pointing towards the thing that you'd like. So for example, the third box here isn't pointing, isn't necessarily pointing towards it uh, as much as I'd like. So I'm going to bring up this one a bit, like so. And I'm going to bring up this one a bit, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to highlight them all, click on arrange, align, and then distribute vertically. And then that way, now I know that where each one is pointing towards, right? So it looks much, much, much cleaner. So um, I'm going to change the numbers of this to so two, three, four, and finally five. 
Ta-da! It's so easy and we've done it. It's very, very, very easy uh, to show how you can take 2D shapes and make them into 3D shapes. Again, I'd like to emphasize you can, you can, you can absolutely use the chevron tool here. But as you can see, the shapes also alter according to the, to the, to the inner surfaces shapes needs as well. So you have to be very careful when you use these, when you use these tools. You're much better off uh, doing, making a shape like I did because that's much more customizable and editable in comparison to using a chevron tool that you have to keep adjusting as, as, you, as you keep making your slide and keep making your infographic. But that's just me, it's up to you guys to how you do it. Um, thank you all for watching once again. Uh, we truly, 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 truly do appreciate um, how much support you've been giving us. You know, we really, really, really want to be the go-to PowerPoint channel and make you guys proud. And hopefully we will achieve that um, very soon, actually. I'm, 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 re I'm really happy with the progress that we're going right now. So thank you guys. You've been awesome. You've been great, as always. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And please, 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 if you if you need anything, if you have any special requests, just let us know. We'll be happy to cater to them uh, if, we, if we could. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.